All righty. All right, so welcome to Coding with Microbit. Let's talk about the Microbit for a second. If you do have a Microbit, great. If you don't, there's also an option to um, simulate your Microbit online so you don't have to worry about it as of yet. Um, so let's talk about the Microbit. The Microbit is a pocket-sized computer. It is designed by the BBC, the British uh, Broadcasting Corporation in um, the UK. Um, I bet some of you guys have watched some shows or movies from the BBC, like Doctor Who and stuff like that, or Sherlock's and stuff like that. Um, so they created this to inspire students from age 11 to 18, so K-12 students in the UK to get creative and develop skills in STEM. So what is the advantage of the microbit? Um, well, you can code it very simply, which is what we're going to show you today. And um, it is a platform for everyone to learn, including you, including me. You know, it took me a while to fully master the microbit. I still cannot say that I'm fully mastered the microbit yet, but it took me a while to actually learn how to do it. Um, you can use the microbit to learn and as well as teaching um, JavaScript, Python, uh, you know, the fundamentals of it. This is a great way um, for beginners to get into coding. Um, especially Python. In my own opinion, Python is one of the strongest language out there. I recommend it for literally everyone, not just beginners. Um, when you get into the higher levels of coding, um, like college level or even like workforce level, Python is going to be the what is going to be one of the main languages that you're gonna need to know. All right, so let's talk about the front of the micro bit. Um, can everybody see my mouse? Like my pointers? Yeah, we can see it a little bit. All right, great. So in the front of the micro bit, there's a USB connector. It's located right over here, right in front of, right on top of the logo. So the use of the USB connector is if you have a physical micro bit, which um, I would expect some of you not to, uh, some, which I expect some of you don't have, um, but the USB connector is used for the microbit to communicate with your laptop, your computer, or in some cases, even iPads and phones and stuff like that. Um, so you connect the USB connector into this port and the other side to your computer. You can import your code, you can download it, you can run your code, stuff like that. At the same time, there's also 25 LEDs over here. This LED is acting as a screen for the micro bit. So again, it's a microprocessor. They're trying to emulate how computer works. So it has a screen. Your screen has millions of pixels in it, but for the micro bit, it has 25 LEDs acting as pixels. So 25 pixels. Um, on the left side, there's an A button. On the right side, there's a B button. These are your physical input. So you can, you know, press them, unpress them, stuff like that. You can press one at once. You can press both at the same time, et cetera, right? Um, there's also a power in and out. So three volts is power in and ground is power out. It is very important for you to connect both the three uh, volts and the ground at the same time. Highly recommend connecting the ground first before you connect any power into it. Um, today, we're not going to talk about um, this line yet, but I'm just going to go over it very briefly. So the 0, 1, and 2 are the inputs of your micro bit. So the micro bit is pretty limited in the sense that, you know, everything is built in. Um, but if you want to expand that, you can connect whatever devices or uh, peripherals you have into these pins down here. Um, you know, there are three options, 0, 1, and 2, and of course, ground and three volts. Ground three volts should always be connected. All right, let's go to the back side of the micro bit. There is another physical input that you have, which is the reset button. The reset button, which is located right on top over here, it is a physical input in the sense that you can press it to reset your micro bit completely. So recycle it. Um, but you cannot code that reset button itself. It is not functional as a coding platform per se. It is functional as a mean to reset your micro bit. Excuse me. On the right side, there's a battery socket. Um, 
if you connect the cable onto your micro bit port that we mentioned earlier, right over here, theoretically speaking, the micro bit is already powered and you can use it. But if you want to use externally, like as a, you know, as a device that you carry in your pocket without your laptop per se, you can connect a battery socket into it. Um, when you buy a micro bit, it comes with a battery socket and um, it comes with a battery container. You can use that battery uh, container connected straight in there. There's also an antenna right over here. This line is the antenna. So most antenna nowadays aren't really physical antennas anymore. They are lines on the microprocessor board itself. Um, very good example of this is on your phone, on your um, iPod, so stuff like that. Most of them don't have the physical, you know, uh, antenna like in your car. Most of them have a line like this. Um, if you ever open your iPhone, you can clearly see it. It's 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 a line on the bottom of your phone, especially on the older iPhones like iPhone 8, iPhone 7, and stuff like that. If you look at the back side, there's a clear line in the back glass. Um, that's the antenna. So the antenna of your micro bit, you can use it as Bluetooth or radio. Um, with Bluetooth, it's actually very, very. I would say comfortable to use. It's very easy to use the Bluetooth. Um, you can connect Bluetooth between your computer and your micro bit to send your code over and not limit it to the physical connector itself. Um, we're not going to touch on the radios today, um, but it also have the radio functions. You can use it to listen to radios. <laughs> and um, of course, many other applications. Um, there's a processor for your micro bit. So this block right over here, this square block is the processor. Most of the computing, all of the computing power of the micro bit comes from over here. Um, you know, compile your code, run your code, stuff like that. Um, there's also a compass and accelerometer over here in this area. Um, the compass, obviously you can use it to detect north, south, east, west, stuff like that. And the accelerometer, you can use it to detect input as in, um, if you shake your micro bit, if you tilt your micro bit to the left, if you tilt your micro bit to the side, um, if you shake it up and down, stuff like that. So yeah, those are the built-in, um, those are the built-in physical connector that the micro bit allow you to have without buying any um, extra peripherals and stuff like that. Let me check the chat real fast. Yep, thank you, Lisbeth. All right, so that's the back side of the micro bit. So now that we know um, what the micro bit has in terms of physical connections and you know what you can do with it, let's start talking about coding. Because the micro bit itself can't really do much, you know. It's 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 a computer. You don't use a computer without the code, right? You have to code everything and then use it. So let's talk about the ways that you can code your micro bit. So there are many options. It's not limited to only these three, but these three are the ones that are officially supported. So the one that the the developers of the micro bit suggest using. So you have three options, uh, depending on your levels of coding or how comfortable you are at, you know, coding your micro bit. Um, the first option is block coding. Block coding, if you guys have taken any block coding classes as in VEX VR, VEX IQ, or Scratch, you should be very comfortable with block coding. It's the exact same concept, just in different colors. So you have different blocks like the forever block, the if and else block. Um, if the button is pressed block, um, you know, you can tell it to show some icons and stuff like that. So this is block coding. I highly recommend block coding for beginners. So people who have pretty much zero experience in coding itself should be able to get started pretty quickly using block coding. So the second option is one with a little more high level of coding per se is JavaScript. So you can use JavaScript 
obviously, you need to learn how to do JavaScript. Today, we're going to touch base on that. Um, you can use a couple basic functions, like the forever functions. If you look at this, basic dot forever open parentheses functions, it is the same thing. So this line over here is the same thing as this block. So this forever block right over here is exactly the same as this basic forever functions. If you take a look at it, it even loops through your whole code. So this line means it's looping through your whole code and cover the whole code. Same thing with the forever block over here. Forever, it's looping over your whole code, right? Let's start making some more comparison between JavaScript and block coding. So let's talk about the if else functions, or in this case, the if functions. So the if functions, again, you have if, open the bracket, closing the bracket, right? You have the if, open the bracket, closing the bracket, and it loop around this block of your code. So let's take a look at the block coding. You have the if, obviously you don't have the bracket, correct? But it also loop through this portion of your code, just like in JavaScript. So you can imagine it like this. Block coding is like a, say a TV show, right? Like, like Harry Potter. This is the movie of Harry Potter and this is the book, right? They do the exact same thing. They tell you the story, but in different means. Um, so this is obviously block. So it's a graphical means, and this is the more text-based mean, right? So this is the book, and that's the movie. But when you compare them, they are basically the exact same thing. Let's start talking about the input button is pressed, right? Even the color is the same exact color. So the input, if button is pressed, button A over here, and when you press it, it's going to show the basic icon, in this case, the small heart. Um, the small heart. Even the color coordinates. So input button is pressed, button A is right here, is in purple or you know, slightly pink. Same thing with this. If button A is pressed, same exact color. Same thing with this. Basic dot show icon. Icon name is small heart. Show icon. This is a small heart right? Same exact functionality, same exact color, just in different means. So one is graphic, the other one is text. You basically get the concept, same thing down here, apply to um, button A and button B, right? So let's talk, let's talk about Python. Python is going to be a little more intricate, per se. It's another options for you to use. Um, I I wouldn't recommend Python over JavaScript. It's basically the same thing. If you're trying to learn text space, it is easier for you to get into it using JavaScript, but at a more you know, professional levels or higher level of education, Python is what I would recommend. But as of right now, let's start sticking with JavaScript. Of course, I'm going to show you, me, me and Lisbeth is going to show you all three means of coding today. Um, start talking about Python. So for Python, first of all, from microbit, from microbit import, that basically means that's telling your code like, hey, I'm going to code a microbit. You have to import this library, this microbit library. Again, not gonna go into the details, but you have to import the microbit library first before you start coding the microbit. Basically telling you the code, this is the device that I'm coding today, which is, the micro bit, right? Um, while true. So this while true functions acts exactly the same way as the forever loop, right? You have a lot of options to loop it forever. You can use the while true functions. You can use the basic for, um, forever functions. You can use this function, uh, this, this forever loop functions ish in block coding. They all act the exact same way. Right, so let's compare Python to JavaScript now. So before we compare JavaScript to block coding, right? But now let's compare Python to Java. So while true is basic forever, right? So same exact way you would do it. Wouldn't call it the same exact language per se, but it's the exact same way. So while true equal basic forever. If button A is pressed, 
display show image heart small. Same thing over here. If the input button is pressed, which is button A, then it's going to show the icon small heart, right? Same exact coding per se, just in different languages, right? Different means of telling the, your computer what to do. But basically, it's the exact same thing. Same thing applied to button B as well. So those are the differences and similarities of JavaScript, block coding, and Python. Um, if you compare it a little more, there are different um, text-based thing that you have to notice. Like say in JavaScript, you have to mind about the brackets. So you have to open brackets and close brackets. So if you look at this, so basic forever, you have to open one bracket at the very beginning and one big bracket at the very end, right over here, right? Um, same thing with the if functions. You open one bracket for the if functions. You close one bracket for the if functions. That bracket acts like this uh, wrapped around right here. So for Java, there's brackets. But for Python, there's no brackets. For Python, basically, you just need a, just two dots, right? Just dot, dot, display show. Um, yeah. So you there are a couple of similarities and a couple of differences and stuff like that. So now, let's go over how you can start coding. Um, obviously, you're on your computer right now, so turn on your browser. If you want to code in block coding in JavaScript, we're going to use makecode.microbit.org. Um, turn on your computer, turn on your browser, just typing it in, makecode.microbit.org. We are going to code really soon, right after this slide. Um, for Michael Python, we're going to go to python.microbit.org to start coding. Okay, so let's do that. I'm going to go to those website right now. So if I just copy paste this, you can see my browser, right, Elizabeth? Yes? Yeah, we can see it. Okay, cool. So makecode.microbit.org. Click on that. This is what you should see. Right, I'm going to start a new project. Yep, I'm gonna type it in the chat. Make code.microbit.org and python.microbit.org. Yep. Where is my chat? There it is. Okay. So, when you turn on makecode.microbit.org, this is what you are going to see. Uh, let's go over this real fast because we have two, three codes that we would like you to try. So, on the left side, this is your microbit. You know, it's a simulation of your, uh, of your microbit. So, anything you code here, you can run it straight over here without a physical microbit itself. So that is a huge advantage. You cannot do this with pretty much anything. Um, I know the Raspberry Pi, you can't really run a Raspberry Pi on your computer or the Arduino. Well, you can run the Arduino on your computer, but there are couples um, limited, like limits that you have to go over. Um, but the micro bit, basically the whole thing is right there on your screen, right? In the middle right here, you have a couple basics, uh, inputs, you can have music, your micro bit can play music, um, LEDs. So this LEDs is what control the 25 LEDs in the middle of your micro bit screen. Um, same thing with the radio. We touched over this before. There's a radio functions. To code that radio functions, you go over radio. Um, there are your basic loops. Repeat how many times you wanna do it. This is the while true, so basically the forever loop. Um, there are also two more complicated stuff over here. There are logics loop, um, like the if and else functions, the if functions, comparisons, Boolean, stuff like that. So over here, there are variables. So you can make your own variables like A, B, C, so letters. You can make your variables as um, integers, so numbers. Um, there's a lot of variables you can make. Again, not going to go over it today. Um, there are also a math function, so you have your plus, minus, time, divide. Um, you can take your reminder. You can have the minimum and maximum. 
um, absolute number, square root, you can round a number up, all that options is available for you. So basically everything you can do with the microbit itself, physically, you can do it on the microbit in the simulations over here, right? With block and JavaScript. So you have options. You can use the block coding, which is right over here, or you can go to JavaScript, same exact functionality, right? So let's test it out. Let's so, so, so let's try it out, see what happened, right? Say if I want a loop, a while true loop, I pull it out, I plug it in here, that's a while true loop. Let's go over JavaScript, let's see how our code change. So now I have a basic forever function, right? That basic forever function is basically that while true loop, the exact same thing, right? Look, you can take it out, pull it in, just take it out, pull it in. You don't even have to type in JavaScript. I recommend you to type, but technically speaking, you don't even have to, right? So let's delete all that. If I delete everything in JavaScript, you go back to block code, you don't see anything as well. All right. Um, so let's talk about Python. Python.microbit.org. Type it in. This is what you're going to see. Here's the disadvantage of using Python on the microbit. There is no simulations. So obviously, if you don't have a physical microbit on you, this code is pretty much useless, right? You can't run it anywhere unless you have a physical microbit. So there's no simulations. Um, you have to download into your microbit or connect it via Bluetooth and stuff like that. Um, you can load and save it, but since you don't have a physical microbit, since we don't really expect you to have a physical microbit yet, we're going to touch on this very lightly, okay? We're not gonna focus on this. What we're focusing on today is block code and JavaScript. All right, let's go back to the slide. So now that we talk, oops. So now that we talk about Python, make code, uh, block coding, which is make code, and, and uh, JavaScript already, Let's talk about a couple projects you can do with it. All right, Lizbeth. Yeah. So, do you want to share your screen? I do you want to share your screen, it. or here I'm going to stop sharing yeah, my screen so you that. can share yours. Great, thank you. Yeah, so as Kai was mentioning, um, with the microbit, there is so many things that you can do that are already um, really presented and given the opportunity for you to do using the make code um, free software online. So right now, I'm actually just going to go ahead and guide you through a, um, through a very simple, simple, simple activity. And that's just for you to get a feel of what it looks like um, to create something using the blocks code. And we're gonna be um, seeing the comparison with JavaScript. So we're gonna go ahead and make an, uh, a dice, so like an LED dice. So when we go over to the maker code, um, here, let me go ahead and uh, take this apart. But the way that you're gonna go ahead and start is you should already have the on start. When you go to input, go ahead and click and drag the the feature that you're gonna be able to do with the micro bit. So on shake, click on that and drag it over. And you can see how everything is color coded, um, which makes it a lot easier to understand. Right now we haven't put in a function. So when it shakes, right now we haven't told it to do anything. We have the option of changing this. So there's so many ways that you can use a micro bit. You can shake it, you can kind of flip it over. Um, you can tilt it left, tilt it right, like a gaming control. Um, you can just kind of drop it like a free fall and it will uh, detect um, the fall using the accelerometer that we covered earlier in the slide. Um, so for the purpose of using a dice, well, you normally kind of, you know, you roll a dice and, and as it shakes, it gives you an image. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, go over to our basic functions and go ahead and click on show string. 
and just put it right in there. Right now it says hello. So right now if we shake it, it's just gonna do what it's automatically uh, put to do, which is just hello. But we're gonna go ahead and change that. Um, using our math uh, features, we're gonna tell it to show a number from one to six. So pick random. So go ahead and click on that purple math function and drag it out. And you're gonna try to click it and drag it right into where that hello box is because we're replacing that. Um, so you should have something that looks like this. And we're gonna change that to six because you know a dice, it's usually a six-sided dice. So six and then one. And when we go ahead and shake it, everybody should probably get a random number. Um, every time I shake it, here it changes. Um, now we're gonna go ahead and take a look at the JavaScript and kind of compare the two. So when the input, which is the pink box, right? Um, the gesture that we're choosing is shake. So on gesture, shake, the function that's gonna happen is gonna be that basic um, display. So the show string, um, it's gonna display the string that includes the math variable, which is purple. Um, and it's telling us that at random, the range that we're using is gonna be a one through six. So that can, we can logically follow each of those words to what we just looked at using blocks code, right? Um, and that's just a very simple way of being able to see that on the simulation here. And it's even glowing and telling us that the shape feature is being used. I can go ahead and change this to, you know, we could use this for a button. We can input um, a different uh, motion. We can kind of, you know, like flip it over or something like that. But just, you know, for the sake of a dice, you shake it and at random, it displays a different number. Um, so this is a very simple and basic activity. So if you completed this by following the steps that I just presented, you can say that you just created your first micro bit activity. I have a question. Yeah, what's up? So in this specific a program you don't have to buy the micro bit you could just do it online but like if you let like if you bought the micro bit could you could you be able to do it from there yes yes so i actually have a micro bit with me um and i can show you okay. the micro bit it's not big i mean if this is my hand it's you know it fits in the palm of my hand here i have it connected i have already downloaded this so i'm actually going to go ahead right now there's a six on the led I'm going to shake it and it changed to a five. Because it was connected to the computer, right? Yes. So it, it's actually connected um, through the USB port. And I went ahead and downloaded the file onto the micro bit. Oh, uh, how do you connect it? Wh which cord is it like a USB to a, um, a USB or? It's a USB type B, a micro USB type B. Yep. Very okay. simple, very generic. Um, like Android charger. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and also just if, if it is something that interests you, um, I know that at some point we are going to mention this, but I think it's a perfect time now, but um, Nova Systemic is actually going to be offering the summer camps um, in which we will be able to go more in depth with the micro bit. And you do have the option of getting a micro bit delivered um, from us to where you can kind of follow along with those activities that we're doing live. So for the sake of a seminar, it's quick, it's short. Um, we're going to go ahead and use that simulation, but it does the same thing that a physical one like this one does. And the summer camp, like, would you actually go to summer camp or would it be like online? Um, so for the summer camp is going to be an online summer camps, but what we're going to do is we're going to send you the physical product you have the options of either keeping the physical product, obviously for a price, or when you sign up for the summer camp itself, you can have the physical product for as long as the camp goes. And after the camp, you're going to have to send it back to us. Um, again, as I mentioned, you don't have to send it back to us. You can just keep it. But mm -hmm. yes, um, for the summer camps, you will have a physical product itself on your hand 
to you know code to run your code and stuff like that we are going to instruct you how to code it obviously and uh yeah and basically you have you have a microprocessor there for you to you know play with to code for as long as the remainder of the the summer class okay that's cool any other questions before we move on to the next uh, sessions or whatever Lisbeth have to uh, say next? <laughs> Those are re really good questions. Thank you for asking that. Um, okay, seems like there's no more questions, um, which that's okay. Um, so yes, we, we went ahead and covered that LED. Um, let me make this bigger for you guys to see the LED dice, and we saw how it follows along in the JavaScript, right? Now, you can, again, with these simple um, three functions that, that we went ahead and presented, you can continue to do more activities, right? Like, we're giving you an introduction to it. Um, now, this is another simple activity here, which um, consists of uh, both block coding and again, because we have the JavaScript option, you can just change it and be able to see what that looks like on both uh, on both ends. Um, and I believe Kai will go ahead and uh, show you how this this can be presented and how this goes. All righty, I'm going to share my screen with you right now. Oops, that's not the right screen. <laughs> this should be the right screen. All righty. So Lisbeth just mentions the LED dice, which use the sec, uh, shake functions. Um, now we're gonna go over the um, the button press functions, right? She already mentioned that you can press button A and button B, um, or both at the same time. Right now we're going to worry about pressing each button at once, right? So this is, so I have three versions for you. The version of block code, the versions of JavaScript and as well the version of Python, right? So let's go over each real fast. So you turn on your makecode.microbit.org. I'm going to refresh this page actually. That's weird. Uh, let's do that again. Make code .org. Starting a new project. Yep. This is what you should see on your screen, right? As of right now, if you click on these buttons, it's going to turn uh, orange or yellow, um, signifying you that it's being pressed, right? So every time I click on it, the button change, the color change. So let's do some inputs. We want button A and button B, right? So I'm gonna pull this out. So an in input on button, click it, drag it out, right? That simple. And if you want to delete it, click it and drag it onto the left side. So the trash can is going to appear, let it go. It's going to be deleted. All right, so we worry about button A and, press and uh, button B, right? So one is going to button A, the other one is going to button B. So what we wanted to do, we want, if we press button A, the small heart is going to appear. And if we press on button B, the bigger heart is going to appear. So where is the heart functions? It's going to be in basics. Again, you don't have to use the show icon. You can use the show LED. Um, and you can basically draw whatever you want in this. You can draw a phase, you can draw an object, whatever you want. But for the sake of time, we're going to use show icon, which is something that is already pre-drawn. Show icon, drag it out, I have two, so I'm going to drag two out. And just put it right in. So if I click on button A, I want the small heart, right? So I'm going to click on this. There's a dropout tab over here. Click on that, choose the small heart, button B, bigger heart, right? So it's already there. There's a lot of other options like a house over here or a duck or sat phase, happy phase, an X, a check mark, stuff like that. There's, there's, there's already pre-drawn options for you. Umbrella, skull, a chair, stuff like that, right? But 
again, for the sake of time and simplicity, we're going to stick with the small and big heart. All right, so now that we have our code, let's see what's going to happen when we run it, right? I'm going to press run. Reset it real fast. If I press on button A, what do you think is going to happen? A small heart. Okay, a small heart. So let's try that out. Click on button A. Small heart appear. What about B? A bigger heart, right? Mm -hmm. If you look at your uh, live right now, Lisbeth already coded, and whenever she pressed a button, the small and big heart appears. So that is what you should have physically, but on the simulations, same thing would appear. Right? Click on A, small heart. Click on B, big heart. Cool. Um, let's say I don't want button A and B. I want both at the same time. How am I going to do that? Obviously, you only have one mouse, right? You only have one mouse. You can't click both button at the same time. But if you click on button A and B, something's going to happen. Another button is going to appear, and you can click on both at the same time. Obviously, in the physical product, you have two hands. I hope, <laughs> and you can press on both A and B at the same time, right? But in the simulations, you can't do that, so one more button is going to appear for you. All right, cool. JavaScript, same exact thing. Lizbeth already mentioned this. I already mentioned this earlier. This is what you go into code in. Do the exact same function as the block code. One very good thing with make code is if you code it in block, it's going to appear as JavaScript form as well, so you don't have to do both. Um, if you do JavaScript, it will appear as block as well, but sometimes it doesn't work that well um, because you know sometimes your input is kind of weird. Sometimes um, you have a typo, um, like say on button press, the B should be capitalized, but you put a normal B on, right? It's going to give you an error. Like, hey, there's an error in there. You might want to go check it. It's going to underline in red, right? So if I change the B to capitalize, it's going to work. So that's the downside of JavaScript, right? Downside of JavaScript is there are minute details that you have to worry about. Um, capitalizations, uh, brackets, um, this, this period right here. So if I change that period to that it's not going to work, right? It's going to give me an error. Like, hey, I, I, I don't understand this. I can't read it, right? It's not in the same, it's not in the correct format. I don't understand. So you have to change it to the correct format. So that is one very big downside of using JavaScript or any languages at all. Um, you have to worry about formats and each languages have different formats. Um, for block code, Obviously, it's just click and drag. Everything's already pre-made for you. You don't have to worry about that. But let's test it out in JavaScript. See, so you have the exact same functionality or not, right? Button A press is small heart. Button B press is bigger heart. Let's do that in JavaScript, not in block. Press A, okay, small heart. Press B, big heart. Same exact functionality. Again, just different languages, right? All right, so let's go to the slide. Um, and by the way, this slide is going to be sent to you via email. So you have a kind of like a guidelines if you want to test out these codes yourself. And also the recording is going to be posted on YouTube. We're going to send you the link whenever it is posted. Um, so this is Python. So let's code this in Python real quick. Okay. I'm going to turn it in Python. Dot micro bit dot okay. This is a Python logo. Obviously, you don't have a way to run this online, right? You, you, you need a physical product. But if you type in everything that I've given you over here, which I am going to type, let me share my whole screen with you. There you go. That's the whole screen. Sorry if my screen is a little complicated. It's kind of long. So it might appear a little small on your computer. Um, so if I type in everything on the left side to the right side, so while true, obviously from microbit import, if you go to this website, those should be already there for you. Um, if button A is 
press. All right. So right here, all I'm doing is press enter. It's going to be tapped in for you already. So tapped in basically means this, right? You can also do this by clicking on the tap button on your computer keyboard. Tap, tap, right? But if I do this, it should already be in there for you. Um, so display show capitalize I niche dot heart small if button B is what <laughs> display show image heart So that basically do the exact same functionality as um, you know JavaScript and block code. It's just different, right? It's it's in a different language. There's different type to there's different way to type it, but basically it does the exact same thing. Um, I don't have a microbit right now, so I can't show you. But as Lisbeth already shown you, that's what it should do, right? That's exactly what it should do. Yeah, so I actually went ahead and just did it myself too. Um, and I took me a second to re-download everything just to make sure it was the same one um, and not the different files, but it does exactly the same thing, right? Like after I went ahead and followed along with what we are presenting um, and, and you're doing it too, once I download it again, it does the exact same thing, right? Like it just simple buttons right there. And just to touch base on something that Kai mentioned, it's always easier to go from block coding to JavaScript to MicroPython as everything is kind of being translated, but it is definitely a little bit harder to go to work backwards from like an advanced language and backtrack um, to block coding, which is why JavaScript, when you type it, um, sometimes it does give you like an error saying that it can't translate or it can't find that block, even though you can still get it to do the same activity. Um, it does it just fine. Sometimes it's the little things of maybe a period, a period or like a parenthesis is needed in the JavaScript. And if you start originally with JavaScript, it will it will show you just that. But you can't take it back to block coding. Um, and with micro Python, um, it works the same way where you can write the whole thing in here. Obviously, some there's not a lot of color code per se that guides you through it. I mean, the colors we'll see are yellow, white, and gray. Sometimes there's blue that appears in some parentheses here and there, but that's about it. And, and it has nothing to do with block coding, but ideally um, with the micro bit, it is a very useful resource for a beginner um, to start coding. Um, in a, it, for the goal is to get to micro Python, to be able to code on a more uh, professional and, and kind of a higher education level. And that's what we're trying to introduce to you all today. And today being that it is the intro to it all, we're covering a little bit of all three, um, but you'll be able to understand how in depth you can go with uh, MicroPython, which is what Kai is showing to us, to all of us right now. Mm -hmm.